a military context, because that is where the big money's at. It's where people are making uh, the, the sort of the biggest decisions, and obviously the ones that can most affect you and me and everyone else in the world. Um, the advantage of robots, first of all, so we, we're already hearing people say that this will be the last generation of XYZ that they build that ever involves a human. The head of the Air Force just said the other day that the uh, Joint Strike Fighter with the latest multi-billion you know, multi dollar program, each one costs several hundred million dollars, will be the last fighter to ever carry a human pilot. Um, I once had the experience of, of doing a simulator uh, for uh, uh, Space flight. It was, it was the, I got into the centrifuge that they use to give you the sort of preview feeling if you're going to be one of these people who pays $150,000 to go to space uh, and, and see if you can handle it, basically. And I washed out immediately. Like, I was totally sick right away because it turns out there's all kinds of stuff about how you shouldn't tilt your head and all this stuff that I just didn't know. Uh, Getting this centrifuge. They said later that that centrifuge is used in a war game that networks the allied air forces across the world uh, in, a, in a big contest to see who's the best fighter pilot. And I asked them, okay, who are the best fighter pilots? And they said, the Bahrainis. The fucking Bahrainis win every year. <laughs> <laughs> Why do the Bahrainis win every year? And they were like, because they're shortest. They have the, the uh, shortest uh, hydrostatic loop, the loop between your heart and your brain. And that, when it's interrupted by the G-force that is pulling basically those things apart, right? As you swing out, if you pull too hard, it swings your heart out and breaks the hydrostatic loop, and that's why you black out. So the Bahrainis are short enough and strong enough that they don't have that same effect. So they can turn a harder G turn than anybody else, and they can turn fast as do it. Introduce a few robots in that equation. They win every time. There's no, there's no question who, who can turn fastest, because that's what decides a dogfight at the end. So now people are trying to figure out, well, what is the ethics of this? How do we deal with a world in which robots are making all of the, not, not just performing the actions, the high G terms, but actually planning shit out. Like, I just barely got here tonight by virtue of actually driving and navigating myself, right? You all, and I as well, use GPS to get everywhere we go, right? So in the military, that's happening too, that thing where Google asks you, which of these three routes do you want to think? Fast or short, you know? There's, that's happening in the military. You're being presented with a tactical plan. Should we deploy these guys over here, this guy, and this guy, or should we blow everything the fuck up right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you what to do, basically, you know, making suggestions. And that, as a result, is limiting our role to one of sort of, you know, multiple choice picker as a military person. That's a scary thing, especially when you think about the ethics of it. So now we've gotten to a point where the, the stuff is happening so fast. Um, yeah, by virtue of what robots can do, right? They can certainly identify that kid in the cliff, right, in a, in a millisecond. They are at the same time becoming a system for defending against threats that happen far too fast for human intervention. So, um, in Jerusalem, the city is covered by the Iron Dome that protects it from incoming rockets, and an automated system detects the rocket, uh, triangulates its position. You know, detects its velocity and fires a thing to intercept it, something the Reagan administration could not pull off with Star Wars, right? They do that on a regular basis in Jerusalem because an automatic system makes that decision. There's now an anti-aircraft gun called a C-RAM that does this exact same thing with incoming planes. And essentially the human being, the designers of these things say, well, the human is remaining in the loop, so it's okay. The thing is, humans cannot respond fast enough to even be useful in that situation. The way one guy said it to me is that it's in the middle of the fu of oh fuck <laughs> when it happens. So you need a decision. You got to roll on that. You're too slow and sleepy for that. So um, people are basically given a veto power. I heard it. Thank you. A veto power, uh, and that is really the limit of a human's role in the future of the military. Is the, the robots going to say, "I'm going to kill all these fucking people," and you say, "Oh, well, yeah, go ahead." <laughs> so, the military and robots.
so and I thought we loved each other, so clearly I don't want to be okay. Maybe I'm just too slow and sleepy and stupid to see what's going on. Oh, don't make, it, don't make it like that. Okay, I didn't mean it like that. Did I say you were stupid? I just had a moment. It's like, I don't like you. <laughs> it's not because you're dumb. All right, gentlemen. Troops on the mountains, and we need to get down there to that river. <laughs> we did, uh. <laughs> nuke them. Uh, we can nuke them? <laughs> That's you. Always nuke them, Dave. <laughs> Save her from, from that. Are you trying to 
serve your country? <laughs>
She's not ready. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Could I please have a preview? <laughs> a preview? Oh, uh, she said a preview, a preview of one. Guys, it's been really hard for me since I moved to England because I don't fit in at all. <laughs>
imagine, look, hey, they got the retreating, goddammit. <laughs> we could have we won this. Maybe they thought that war isn't the answer. No, 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 no. Do any of you listen to yourselves? <laughs> can you hear the voice that come out of your mouths? I Don't can... fight. I... Yes, I hear it clearly. But I can hear that beautiful waterfall, and I think there's a I think there's a robin behind it singing a little song. The world should be dead by now. The nuke should have rained from the sky. <laughs> but that beautiful dome saved us. <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to wrap your name on your underwear for that 